In this video, I'm going to show you how I did the bivariate regression in SPSS for the example where years of education was used as a predictor of earnings per day. And just to note, here are the annual earnings that I obtained originally for this study, and they were divided by 365 to get earnings per day. So independent variable here, education, earnings per day as the dependent variable. So go into Analyze, Regression, Linear, and put education in the independent box and earnings per day in the dependent variable box and at this stage this is all I'm gonna do there are other options over here but I'm not gonna click on them the only thing I'll point out is that if you click on options there's not much you can get there but in statistics you can get the descriptives if you wanted those and what that's gonna do is it's going to include some of the basic descriptives that I've already looked at and so I'll show you what that looks like in the bivariate regression utility so first off it gives you the mean and standard deviation for both and we've already looked at that up here but you get a lot more if you do it through the frequency approach in SPSS because you can look at skewness and kurtosis you can't do that in the regression utility but we're getting the same results and we're getting a sample size of 40. Now we also get the Pearson correlation because I mentioned that in the textbook because we had looked at that in another chapter the correlation between education levels and earnings per day and it's a 0.337 correlation. Now one thing I'll note is that when you do it this way SPSS gives you a p-value and that p-value is actually a one-tailed p-value. So if you were to do this correlation the regular way through correlate bivariate education earnings per day and then click OK, you can see that the correlation is exactly the same at 0.337 but the p-value is 0.033 whereas through the bivariate utility it chops it in half so 0.017 times 2 is 0 0.034 so that's just a decimal place difference so you be careful with that it's a one-tailed significance you might not actually want to report that probably you don't I just want to point out the main thing for the bivariate regression after looking at the descriptive statistics and the correlation is you would skip these tables because they're more relevant to something called multiple regression not bivariate regression the key table is associated with this coefficients table and we can see that we do get the intercept, which SPSS calls the constant. And so this value 13.97 is the value of y when x is 0. So if education is 0, we expect a person to earn $13.98 a day. And it also has a standard error. And SPSS tests the constant for statistical significance. Now, in the overwhelming vast majority of cases, you will not be interested in testing the statistical significance of the constant. And this would be an example study where you wouldn't be interested in that. I'm just pointing it out for thoroughness. And then you have education, which is the independent variable. And the unstandardized beta weight is equal to $7.61 rounded. So for each unit increase in education, there is a $7.61 increase in earnings per day. That's what the unstandardized beta weight is. And here's the unstandardized beta weight standard error. And here's the t-value for that unstandardized beta weight. And just to remind you about statistics is that if you divide the point estimate by the standard error, you get the t-value. And then that t-value with the degrees of freedom is tested for statistical significance. And in this case, the p-value is 0 0.033 which, because it's lower than 0 0.05, implies that there is a statistically significant effect between education and earnings per day. Now, we knew that based on the correlation. But what we didn't know, based on the correlation, is the intercept, which in this case is 13.976, and the unstandardized beta weight, which is $7.61, rounded. And with those values, we can build a regression equation, which I talk about more later in the chapter. The only thing missing from this table are the 95% confidence intervals for both of these. So we can go fish those out in SPSS. So go into Analyze, Regression, Linear, and let's go into Statistics and Confidence Intervals. So if we click on Confidence Intervals 95, it will give us the confidence intervals for both the intercept if you follow that row, constant is intercept. And here are the 95% confidence intervals for the intercept, negative $84.62 all the way up to a positive $112.
And here's the unstandardized beta weights, 95% confidence intervals, 0.63, so 63 cents a day increase for each unit increase in education, one year increase in education. It might be as low as 63 cents, or it might be as high as $14.59. And the reason these confidence intervals are so wide is because the sample size is really rather small at only a sample size of 40. And as the sample size will increase, the 95% confidence interval range will reduce in size as well. And you'll see that later on in the textbook. I, I guess the last thing I'll note is that the standardized beta weight associated with education, which is 0.337, is exactly the same thing as the Pearson correlation. And that will always be the case in a bivariate regression. So a standardized beta weight is exactly the same thing as a Pearson correlation in the bivariate regression case. But you get this extra information for the intercept and the unstandardized beta weight, which is important. And you'll see that further along.